Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. My name is Rome Paulson. It's a brand new week and a brand new month. Happy new month to you. This is the second day of September. Yes, the ninth month of the year. And I'm sure you're asking, how did the year run so fast? Well, time flies while you're doing what you love. So we hope you're doing what you love this morning. Anyways, welcome to the second day of September. Now, September is known as um, you know the awareness month for sickle cell so in this month we'll just implore everyone to get involved make sure that you're donating blood make sure you're supporting research make sure that you're just being kind to everybody especially people with sickle cell so in any way you can spread the awareness in any way you can educate more people about it please do that all right on today's breakfast show we'll be talking about several hot topics one of which fuel crisis worsen as unpaid debts disrupts distribution another we're talking about much later in the show is analyzing in the political issues in a reverse PDP. We'll also be taking global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies as well as some top trending stories. But since we're in September, let's take our quote of the day to set the tone. If you don't like the road you're walking, start paving another one. And that is by Dolly Parton. She's an American singer, songwriter, author, actress, actually. She does so many things, wears many hats. And she's saying this morning, if you don't like the road you're walking, start paving another one. And the best time to start is today. Um, uh, do not wait and, sip and procrastinate and say, you know what, I'm going to do it much later. In fact, I saw a quote over the weekend that talks about that talked about trains, and it says, "If you go on a wrong train, it is better for you to um, leave at your next stop. So come down at your next stop else. It would even be more expensive when you're taking a return trip back and you've gone so far. So that's almost like this quote. And of course, they were not talking about trains; they're talking about your life. So if you feel like at this point, I do not like the road I'm paving, or rather, I do not like the road I'm walking on. I do not like where my life is you can start to pave another one you can retrace your steps you can try to have that big beautiful life that you've always wanted so you can start paving another road for yourself you can start paving that path for you something that, that is going to give you the the most beautiful the wondrous lifestyle that you've ever wanted so do not sit and stay and say oh I'm sorry I can't do this or I wish I could I could have a better life now is the time today is the day you have the present you're not even sure about tomorrow you don't know if you're gonna wake up tomorrow so why are you not making hay while the Sun shines while you're not trying your best to do those things that would give you that big beautiful life that you've always wanted so if you don't if you do not like the road start paving another one do not make any excuses do not look at all of the things I know that there might be circumstances um, that can hinder our growth but what 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 best way can you help yourself is by making sure that all of the things are in place. You're trying your best. It's better for you to try and fail than for you not to try at all. So like Dolly Patton says this morning, if you do not like the road you're walking on, start paving another one. And that is for September because I know it's the ninth um, month of the year and most people would just be like, oh, where is September? Maybe I'll keep it till next year. No, you can still, you can still do such great things this year. You still have four months at least to make sure that you're striving, striving towards your goal and you can do it. We believe in you. We know that you can do it. All right, that's it for our quote of the day. We'll move over to some top trending stories. Well, this one talks about Zamfara flood. It destroys farmlands, displaces over 10,000 people. 
Now, over 10,000 people have been displaced and farmlands along with other properties worth millions of naira have been destroyed by flood after several weeks of intense rain in Gomi, local government area of Zamfara State. The Emir of Gomi, Justice Hassan Lawal, stated this on Saturday when Zamfara State Governor Dauda Lawal paid an on-the-spot assessment visit to the local government. Governor Lawalo visited Gummi Town and the Garai community to assess the extent of the damage caused by the flood. Briefing the governor, the emir of, um, of the state provided a breakdown of the situation in the local government. According to his assessment, about 10,291 households were affected. In response, the governor sympathized with the flood victims and announced an immediate relief package of 100,000 naira and a distribution of 10,000 bags of assorted grains along with mosquito nets and blankets. Governor Lawal also pledged to address long-term flood management by constructing new drainage systems, repairing existing dams and potentially building additional ones. First question is, why did it have to take so long? Why did it have to take um, over 10,000 people being dis displaced before they're thinking of um, uh, measures? And I think that's the problem with Nigeria. I mean, it's great now that they're talking about this, saying, okay, we're going to um, you know, make drainage systems, we're going to clear the dams, we're going to ensure that you know, um, everything that's causing the flooding would, would just mitigate it. So it's great that they're talking about this. But I think one issue that we have as Nigerians is we're not proactive enough. Why are you not thinking about situations even before it happens? Why are you not planning for the worst thing that could happen? Because this could be easily prevented. The things that you want to even do right now is going to cost more money because guess what? Millions of Naira has been lost. People have been displaced. Their properties have been destroyed. So that is wastage. Meanwhile, we could have just done all of this and ensure that nobody is being displaced. Now, um, like I said, it's great that you're thinking about doing this, but it is important that we start to have proactive measures. And I know that it's not just Zamfara State. In fact, I think one time in Bayosa, um, there was flooding there. Can we even talk about Lagos? I mean, we are here situated in Lagos. And on the island, everywhere gets flooded. In fact, I make a joke that if someone pours two cups of water on the road, the road gets flooded. That is how much, um, how easy it is to get flooded here in, 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 on the island in Lagos. So imagine other states, and I think it is important that we start to look at this. What can we do better? How can we make drainage systems? How can we make sure that they're even clear? Maybe into the, into the lagoon, the sea wages, what are we doing? Because a lot of times, and I think this also has to do with education to the people, because some people, obviously, they, they throw their waste into, the, into the, the gutters, and of course, what happens then, that would block the drainage system. But even if that happens, make sure that you have enough staff. Make sure that you have enough people who you are employing to ensure that they clear out these drainage systems because creating the drainage system is one thing. Maintaining it is another. So uh, my heart goes out to the people that, you know, they've been displaced. We hope that, you know, the government does something. I mean, giving them a palliative is great with the mosquito nets because I can only imagine, you know, even what their health will be like right now. We know when um, water, a body of water is in a place, mosquitoes and, you know, even diseases, they, they start to, they start, they, they come up. So hopefully um, most of them will be well and hopefully the government is facilitating this, making sure that they're doing this as swiftly as possible possible to ensure that everybody is fine and the drainage system is important clearing the dams is important but let us start to think of proactive measures so that we don't even get here um, in the first place and just making because at the end of the day you know you're supposed to ensure that the people in your constituency they're they're safe in fact you should be thinking of other things for them not even we're not even supposed to be talking about flooding right now because you definitely know that it's going to rain so how do you prepare for the rainy season for the rainy season we know that, of course, we need the rains even for their farmlands. And look at, we keep talking about food insecurity. Now, a lot of farmlands have been destroyed. Crops that have been, um, seeds that have been sown, people waiting for their harvest. Now, nothing. And we're saying that we need food security. If we're not looking at all of these things, then what are we doing? 
So please, world, implore the government to ensure that they're making proactive measures, they're thinking for the people, even before situations happen, you're already thinking ahead. It's better to, to have those thoughts on your fingertips, like what happens, how do we um, how do we mitigate this if eventually it could happen? And so when that finally comes, you know how to work better because you have planned for it. So it's important that we're making those plans, putting them in place to ensure that everybody, everybody in Nigeria, no matter what part, this is Zamfara now, they were talking about Biosa, Rivers, Delta, sometimes Lagos. So it's important that everybody comes together. Whoever needs the education to stop um, you know, the blockage of the drainage, drainage system, they do that. Whoever needs to actually do the drainage system, you're not being corrupt and siphoning the money, you're doing that. And we just even have a better infrastructure in Nigeria. So hopefully that happens. Moving over to another top trending story. This talks about Ogun shuts down two Chinese firms for improper waste disposal. The Ogun State Waste Management Authority has sealed off two Chinese companies for allegedly contravening the environmental laws of the state. In a statement on Sunday, the authority said it took the action after several warnings to companies fell on deaf ears. The government said the companies also refused to engage accredited waste collectors to properly manage their waste. The managing director of the authority, Abayomi Unye, led an enforcement team to sell the companies. According to him, the two companies were also found guilty of engaging the services of unaccredited, unaccredited waste collectors to evacuate their waste in contravention of Section 17 of the Ogun State Waste Management Authority Law of 2020. In quotes, he says, the essence of shutting them down is to ensure that they comply with the standard ways of managing waste in the state, he said. We have served them several notices and warnings, and they refuse to comply. We have even gone to their premises for inspection severally to counsel them to clean their environment and engage government-approved waste collectors, but they were unyielding. Nye warned that any company found guilty of similar violations will be sanctioned whether it is owned by Nigerians or foreigners. Well, great way to go. I think at the end of the day, if you are in a place, it's important that you know you you adhere to the laws. You cannot come here and you're doing something else. If there is a law that says these are accredited um, you know, waste management companies, it is important that you engage those, those companies. And I'm sure it's not just one company, so you definitely have options. Now, I know on the flip side, some people would say, is it because of what's happening with the FTZ deal? Is that why they're coming you know, for Chinese companies? Well, that is a question that we probably cannot answer. But at the end of the day, it is important that these Chinese firms, whether Chinese, whether, um, you know, Japanese, whether Turkish, whatever company, and like they, like they said, um, even if it's owned by Nigerians, we would still e expect you to adhere to our laws. So it's not even, I don't think it's a, it's a case of witch hunting. I don't think it's a case of, oh, because this is happening and then we're going to look for loopholes to, to, you know, hold you down. I think it's just important that you follow the laws. And one thing that I had just spoken about earlier, you know, about the drainage system is also waste. So if you're not even disposing your waste properly, you're creating an environmental hazard. That is what it is, an environmental hazard. So if your premises is not as clean as it should be, um, maybe you're just having someone down the road coming to pack up the waste, they're not doing it properly. That is why you should you know, engage the accredited ones. So you do not want a situation whereby even people who are living around you, your neighbors, they feel uncomfortable because of how you dispose your waste. And talking about waste management, I feel like we definitely need to do a lot more in Nigeria um, when it comes to having to dispose our waste. We never really talk about recycling. There are lots of plastics, you know, that go into this, this, this um, disposal. Sometimes they end up in our gutters, and before you know it, they block our drainage system. Why are we not trying as much as possible to conserve the, the planet that we have? And waste disposal is one way that we can conserve the, the planet, right? Because if we're disposing paper the way it should be, if we're disposing um, bottles and glasses the way they should be, if we're disposing plastic the way they should be, if we're disposing food, um, you know, um, food refuse the way they should be, then we're, we're, we're doing it right. We're conserving our planet. And that's what you see other countries that they have. You know, you, you see them have different boxes, um, or different bins for different things. 
And we need that kind of education in Nigeria because if we're saying, oh, I mean, we went to COP28, we're talking about the environment, we're talking about CO2, we're talking about emissions, we're talking about all of these things, then even the little things, as little as waste, we should be doing it right as well. So disposing our waste properly should be paramount. We should educate people about it, how to do it the right way, um, you know, engaging the right people as well. So with this Chinese company, of course, no one is happy, happy when um, their, their company is being shut down or closed off. But it is important that they adhere to the laws of the state. And having a proper waste disposal management is one of those laws. And hopefully they would sort it out and learn their lessons. All right, our final top trending story says Serap Suza Pabu Abbas for fixing running costs of lawmakers. The Social Economic Rights and Accountability Project, Serap, has issued the leadership of the National Assembly members for fixing what it described as the running costs of lawmakers. Joined in the suit were Senate President Goswila Pabu and Speaker of the House of Representatives, Tajuddin Abbas. The group claimed the duo failed to end in court the unlawful practice by the National Assembly of fixing its allowances and running costs and failure to account for the monthly running costs paid to members. In the suit, the group seeks an order of mandamus to direct and compel Mr. Pabio and Mr. Bass to end the unlawful practice of the National Assembly fixing its remuneration and allowances termed as running costs. It also wants an order of mandamus to direct and compel Mr. Pabio and Mr. Bass to disclose the exact amount of the monthly running costs being paid to and received by the lawmakers and spending details of any of such running costs. Right way to go. And I think definitely this is what we would expect our leaders. We shouldn't even have to talk about it. We shouldn't have to ask you. And at this point, of course, um, you know, Sarah had brought it up. But now that they're taking them to court, it's because nobody listened or nobody responded to them. I feel like transparency is key in leadership. You're not going to lead a group of people and you're, you're not transparent. You're not accountable. We, we're not even sure if you have integrity. It is important that when you're leading a group of people, you let them know this is what we're doing. This is where we are. And you take accountability for your actions. Now, with the running costs or you know whatever remuneration that they have, I mean, it was being said that each senator was you know being paid about 21 million naira. Meanwhile, the RMAFC, you know, had said each senator's um, uh, salary comes up to just over one million naira. So, of course, there are discrepancies with this. How do we go from one million to 21 million? There is a lot. But if you're not going to be transparent, then how do we even know? How can we even defend you? How do we know that, yes, this is how much you make? Nobody is coming out to say anything. Nobody is, um, you know, trying to diffuse whatever is being said. They're just going about their days. But these are taxpayers' money. And, of course, you should be answerable to the people. So if we're asking, how much do you earn? Can we see your logbook or, you know, whatever salaries that you've been paid? Can we see that? No, but nobody's saying anything. At the end of the day, if we're going to move forward as a people, if we're not going to be transparent, then we're just, we're just playing. We hope that the government at some point and sometime soon will understand that if, if we're not going to be accountable, these people might just rise up. There might just be a revolution. Because there is a woman down the street who's trying to make ends meet and everything is so expensive and she probably still needs to pay taxes. And then there are some people who are sitting in an air-conditioned, um, you know, an air-conditioned room, just sitting down. Of course, they're lawmakers, so they're making laws and stuff. But then they're earning as much as 21 million naira in a month. Even senators in the United States of America do not earn that much. And when we did the calculation for, for about um, 70,000 naira, which is the minimum wage currently, that is 300 people's salary. 300. So if you're not going to come out to tell us, yes, this is what we're doing, 
then we can't, there's, there's really not much we can do. There's no way we can even move forward. So we hope that, you know, what Serap is doing, and kudos to Serap. I mean, Serap is one organization that, you know, takes, that's passionate about Nigeria and makes sure that when things like this happen, they're always going to speak up or they're always going to serve these this, this lawmakers or these politicians and all of that. So hopefully the, 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 the lawmakers, the senators, the politicians, the House of Rep members, the governors, everyone um, in the political space, they start to have that integrity. They start to have that transparency. They start to have to be accountable as well. I mean, with all of these monies, what are you using them for? Meanwhile, the roads are depleting. Meanwhile, there are people who cannot afford basic necessities of life. There are people who cannot even buy drugs. The healthcare system is, is nothing, to, nothing to write them about. There are people who cannot afford to go to the hospital. But yet, you are somewhere getting 21 million naira in a month. And you're not coming out to say yes or no. So it is important that, you know, we start to even do the costing again. Because I know former President Obasanjo had come out, and this was where it stemmed from, had come out to say that, you know, the, the lawmakers, the senators, they're fixing their own salaries. Shouldn't there be a standard? Why are you fixing your own salary? There should be a standard that this is how much we want to pay you. And it is important that, you know, most of these people, because a lot of times they come here as poverty alleviation schemes. So, of course, I want to be a politician because I know that I can make much money in such short period of time. But if they know that you're coming here to serve and it's not just the money, it's not just, you know, the, the, um, the big amount, the huge amount of money that you're going to make, then maybe we can have people who are really passionate about transforming Nigeria, transformational leaders. So they're doing it not just because they want to make the money, but they're doing it because of the love that they have for Nigeria. And that is where, um, that's where we want to get to. I hope that we'll get to a place whereby we'll start to have transformational leaders that are not just looking at their pockets, no, but you're looking at ways to ensure that everybody in Nigeria, we all have a better life. So for the, um, you know, um, Sarah actually suing um, the senators and the House of Representatives, their leaders, um, I feel like, I hope rather that, you know, they respond and then they do something about it. You cannot be making so much money buying 160 million Naira SUVs. Meanwhile, the constituents are just not having anything and they just can barely feed. It is inhumane. It is important that we are empathetical towards each and everybody, your neighbor, your brother, your sister, your colleague. It is important that you want everybody to grow and thrive and it shouldn't just be a select few that are making all the money in Nigeria. All right, that's it for our top trending stories. We'll go on a short break. We'll look at the weather. When we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us.